This tutorial will show you how to use liquid watercolors to create a beautiful background with salt. All you need is watercolor paper, watercolors. I'll be using liquid watercolors, but you can do this with a regular pan of watercolors that you have too. And you need thick sea salt or kosher salt for the best results. If you love learning about art, hit that subscribe button so you never miss an art tutorial. I'm gonna start by taping down my watercolor paper and I'm not gonna include a border, but I'm just using masking tape and I'm overlapping very lightly on the top and bottom so it doesn't move around and the paper doesn't curl. I'm using Canson watercolor paper and I'll put all of my materials in the description box. With this technique, you definitely wanna use watercolor paper or water-based media paper because you're gonna be dousing your paper with water. And so if you use cheap paper, your results just won't be as vibrant and your paper might rip and tear. I'm using a very large round brush and I'm using a palette with my liquid watercolors. Now I've done this technique before and I'll put a link above to my galaxy tutorial, which is very simple. It's just minus the salt and not liquid watercolor, which I'm holding right here. If you have a spray bottle, you can use a spray bottle to cover your paper in water, but I'm a classroom teacher and I don't have 30 spray bottles for each of my students. And so instead I just load my paper with my brush. So as you can see, my paper has water on the whole surface and I am lightly dabbing my liquid watercolor. So look how very little paint I have on my brush and I'm dabbing it into the already wet paper and it's spreading out like tie dye or fireworks and it's just really satisfying. You can use as many colors as you would like, but keep in mind your colors are gonna blend and flow. So pick colors that work together. If your colors aren't spreading like mine, you need to add more water. So you can either use a spray bottle like I did, or you can cover the whole thing with your brush or just do a corner at a time, depending on how big your paper is. If your paper is huge, you might wanna just do like a section or half of your paper so it doesn't dry. If it does dry and it doesn't spread out, just add more water to your brush or even get your spray bottle and get that water moving. So you notice I'm not doing long brush strokes, I'm simply tapping it into the water and that's what makes this really cool effect because the water moves and the paint travels with it. Now I'm dipping into yellow and this is where the magic happens. Your second color will spread into your first. So I'm gonna try and limit myself and just focus on my yellow and blue. And I chose these colors for a reason. Yellow is my favorite color. And I know that yellow and blue make green. So when they do mix, because they're going to, you can see that the colors will make a satisfying color that's not brown. Not that there's anything wrong with brown, but just be mindful about which colors that you use. If you're a classroom teacher, maybe you limit the color scheme. Um, I've had students do this and create a galaxy, so I gave them black, magenta, blue, and red. It really just depends on what your goals are. I'm using this for a background for drawing or printmaking, and so I'm just looking for vibrant colors that I think look nice together. If you're using a traditional watercolor set that's not liquid, you might just use a little bit more water on your brush so that it spreads out and is more liquidy. Water is the first part of the word watercolor, so embrace the pond of water that's happening on your paper. Once you're satisfied and you feel like you have a good mix of colors, it's time for the magic. It's time to add salt. I'm using coarse kosher salt and the larger the grains of salt, the better. So you can see this is really large salt and before your paper needs to be super wet, before your paper dries, add salt onto your watercolor design. Now salt is going to absorb the water and it's gonna make an even more fun design than this. So if you don't have salt, you can certainly stop with your colors um, and you'll still have a really beautiful tie-dye like design. But when the salt dries and you can go in and add more color before you add more salt too, you can kind of go back and forth. Just remember your brush will pick up some of the salt and you can cover your whole page. You can use a lot of salt, a little bit of salt. The beauty of watercolor and this technique is you don't control what the salt absorbs and you can't control how the colors blend. So it's satisfying because you kind of let the art material decide for you. Okay, I'm gonna do a side-by-side -side and I'm gonna speed things up. On the left-hand side, I'm gonna use the same color scheme, so exact same technique that you've seen before, but I'm gonna show you the difference um, in using coarse salt, like sea salt or kosher salt, and then using more of a fine salt, just like your general iodized table salt. So you can see I'm dabbing in my colors, um, they're mixing beautifully, and I did not use a spray bottle this time. 
One thing to encourage, uh, make sure to go all the way to the edges and corners. Don't leave any awkward white spaces. And again, as soon as it's super wet, that's when you add your salt. Happy with how the colors are traveling and marbling together. So I think I'm pretty much ready to add the table salt. And you're gonna see right away the difference in how thick or thin the grain is. So I'm using my iodized salt, pouring some in, look how small and thin that is. And exactly like I did before, I'm putting it into my wet pools of water. Salt will always absorb the water and that's gonna make a really cool effect when it dries. Speaking of drying, your paper has to be absolutely dry before you do this next step. I always prefer to take a paper towel because the salt kind of hurts my hand and it has to be completely dry or your colors will blend. But take a paper towel and wipe away your salt. Yes, it makes a mess. Yes, some of the salt will stick permanently. But if you do a circular motion, you should be able to get all or most of the salt off of your paper. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see the effect and so you can see this side by side, but I'm gonna dump this salt in the trash can first. So you can see, I'm gonna go ahead and take off my tape. Um, and that was not to make a border, that was just to kind of make sure that my paper wasn't wiggling or moving around. Um, so you can see that the salt does show up. You can see some of the grains and I am gonna remove a little bit more there. Um, so I will be able to draw or print on top of this without it messing up my pen or messing anything up. Then you can see the really cool texture that the iodized salt made. Now, for best results, you wanna use the kosher thick salt that I use on the right. So looking closely, you can see how it made like almost like little flowers or little blooms or the inside of a geode. And now I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I have to paint that now. And the one on the right, it's not bad, but the texture is just much smaller because the grains of salt are smaller. So you still have an interesting texture, but when I do this, I prefer to use the thicker salt. Thank you so much for sticking around and making art with me. And if you're interested in what my students will be doing with, with these papers, check out my printmaking tutorial that they will be using this for backgrounds. This makes a great surface for contour drawing. It makes a great surface for drawing with a pen. And if you're interested in more art tutorials, check out my website, thatartteacher.com and find me on Instagram to see what my students are up, up to at thatartteacher underscore machado.